How do you do, my friends everywhere, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and boys and girls, and people? I am Professor Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is our business. And our special business today has enchantment unending, uncommon, indeed incredible, as you will see. And by way of introduction, we need to learn some certain principles which go like this. Supposing I had a horizontal pipe of uniform cross-section, and I put some incompressible liquid in there, like water, a certain quantity per unit time. Say 100 gallons per second. That'll make it a little real. <clears throat> if I put a bucket here to catch it, I will catch 100 gallons per second. And the flow would have a certain velocity in there, more exactly, it would be less as we get near the edges because of friction, but we'll disregard that. So the velocity in that pipe is so much, and its cross-sectional area is so much. Now let me draw the pipe down smoothly to a narrower cross-section and put a bucket there, and you are aware that I will still catch 100 gallons per second, but since this cross-section is narrower, smaller, the velocity here will be greater than the velocity here. This region we will call a constriction with respect to this one, a constriction. So we have learned the first thing. In a constriction, the velocity increases, and I say goes up. Very important. Now let me measure the pressure in this pipe and in that one. For this purpose, I'm going to put on a manometer, which matter you can look up in your books or talk about with your teachers. And if I measure the pressure in these pipes, I find the pressure in this one, say, to be so much, and in this one, less. So the pressure in a constriction is less. Second principle, the pressure goes down in a constriction. And now, would you believe it? It is incredible. The fact that the pressure goes down in a constriction tells us a thousand things. Why an airplane can fly, why a bird can soar, why a flag flutters, why a ball can be thrown in a curve, why trains and uh, planes must not pass too close upon each other, why a chimney has a good draft. And I'm going to show you that one because it's beautiful. Why an atomizer works. An atomizer. So let us go and see the application of these principles which come under the name of Bernoulli. And you should go read about the Bernoullis because this was a family of over a hundred of them, all geniuses, not one an ordinary man incredible in the history of human thought. So let us go look at some things. Let us go. Come and witness the facts here and now. First, I have opened a magazine at random, and here are some pages that are shaped like this, and we would imagine this to be the leading edge of an airplane wing. Airplane going this away. Now I'm going to blow some air across the top of that page and watch. Ha ha! The page was lifted up. Wonderful! One would think that it would be knocked down by the push of the air. Watch it. Ho ho! I have some airplane, some wing flutter there, which of course we must avoid in real airplanes, but the greater the pressure, the, the less the pressure above, atmospheric pressure below, pushes it up. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we see why an airplane is lifted up because of the reduction in pressure on the lower side of the wing. Of these matters we shall say more in the next program. And I thank you for watching.